Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Uh, today I want to talk about side chaining, what it is and uh, four ways you can do it. And uh, I will talk a little bit about each way and uh, give you uh, my preferences, how I do it and also show you the other ways so you can see exactly how you want to apply side chaining to your project. Um, so without further ado, let's get right into that. All right, so before we get into the four ways you can set up side chaining, uh, we'll talk a little bit about what it is. Um, so let's take this uh, kick and bass here. Oh, sorry for that. And let's turn off the sidechain compressor we have on this first part, which is providing the sidechaining on these four notes here. If you now listen to the kick and bass, you can hear that they're clashing very, very hard together. There's a few ways we can change that. For example, we can move the notes back here and uh, let's do that for all of them. So we could do something like this, but that gives us a different vibe to the track. Now we have an offbeat, um, an offbeat track. So the other thing you can do is side chaining and side chaining sounds like this. And what it's doing is we're taking one element and we're uh, using that to determine where another element should be turned down in volume. And there's a few different ways of doing that. Uh, one of the most common ways or the most common ways is just take your kick and use that volume uh, to scoop out the volume of the bass. Uh, a little bit of a cleaner way to do it is using an external trigger. Uh, this is a few uh, advantages. One, you can manipulate the sidechain trigger. So if you want to sidechain to decrease over the whole project, uh, for example, you have 10 uh, different tracks in which you have side chaining instead of having to uh, you know turn the side chaining down on each individual track you can uh, just turn down the channel volume and that will uh, turn down you know the channel overall or the, the side chaining on each channel uh, having it to the kick that's not really possible um, but also the, the the trigger can be a lot cleaner and it allows you to set up a lot cleaner of a side chain uh, but we'll get into that uh, in a little bit I'll first let you listen to the four different types of side chaining that we have. Um, technically, you could have any form, any kind of feel to your side chain that you want with any of these methods, uh, but some are a little bit easier to edit where others are a little bit easier to set up and work with maybe. Uh, so let's play it here. Uh, so the, the four ways that I've come up with uh, are using a sidechain compressor. Let's open up the chat. Using a sidechain compressor, using Serum effects, using a utility, and using LFO tool. Uh, so the sidechain compressor is the basic way of doing sidechain. That's the way it was invented, uh, which is basically just having a compressor and sending an extra signal to it, uh, which you can just do by opening up the standard compressor here, and then it'll show sidechain and you can set up your side chain however you want. And um, yeah, you can just take a side chain trigger or just the kick in general. That's all, as you can see from the, the, the diagram here, it looks a little bit less clean. Obviously you would make different settings then in that case. Um, but with the external trigger, it looks a lot cleaner. You can see it goes nice up and down. Um, so that's the first way of doing it. The second way if, is with Serum FX, uh, which I have here. Now with Serum FX, there's a little bit of a compromise to be made. Uh, I do really like this technique because it allows you to do all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, so here we have some MIDI notes, which is our trigger. So instead of an audio trigger, we're using a MIDI trigger. And uh, this might be nicer for you if you want to work with MIDI. Uh, for example, if you want to send this MIDI also to your kick drum because you have your kick drum loaded in a sample, you can use the same MIDI pattern and you don't have to edit, you know, the kick once and then you have to go in and edit your sidechain as well. You can just use the same MIDI everywhere and um, it will be uh, set up in a way that it's easier to handle. Um, so let's see what this setup is. Um, as you can hear, there's a little bit of a problem with this setup right now, the way it has as it, it kind of changes the sound a little bit. Um, 
you can hear that it's slightly changing the sound. I don't know why that is. Uh, maybe I had to do this with the mix instead. Uh, we can give that a try. We'll set this like this. I think that might have fixed it. Yeah. Okay. So what's happening here is that we're using the X shaper and we have set up uh, LFO to one and MIDI is going into that. Uh, or uh, we have set up uh, Serum FX here to get MIDI from this MIDI track. And as you can see, we're sending it to the bass channel MIDI track and it's being triggered and the LFO is being triggered. It's in envelope mode, one over four. So that's being triggered by um, this MIDI here. And then we have a distortion unit where we're using the X shaper here, not the asymmetrical one, just the normal one. And then we go into A and uh, initially when you open it up, it looks like this. What you can do is just drag this node down so you have complete silence. And then with the drive going all the way down, uh, this thing isn't updating. Maybe it's because of the mix. With this thing all the way down, you can see it's just turning down the audio and it's turning it into silence. Uh, so that's how that side chaining works. Uh, as I showed, you have to set the LFO to the mix and just in this configuration, so mix all the way up and LFO is moving it down. And that way you can edit your side chain. You can set it less aggressive, or more aggressive. You can go whatever you want. Uh, you can do cool creative stuff like this if you want maybe uh, a plucky sound, something like this. There's a way you can do that as well. Uh, so you can generally get a lot more creative with this and it's a lot easier to kind of see what you're doing because you're editing like an actual uh, LFO. Um, so that's how you do it with uh, LFO tool or with uh, Serum FX, sorry. Uh, the next one is utility. And utility is just a volume uh, kind of tool here in this case. So we go to the game and as you can see what I've done is I've just drawn in a, in a curve that I like and it's just affecting the volume. Uh, generally, I don't like doing it on this thing here, so I would recommend having a utility for that. So you can always set uh, the main actual output volume differently. Um, but the utility here is really there to just sidechain and it's just an automation clip. Uh, generally, I don't really like this way. It's I know it's a common way. People tend to use this a lot. Um, just, you know, volume automation, but I don't really like it because generally when you're you know, working on automation, it's a little bit hard to see what you're doing and you might accidentally shift something around and not know why uh, it's suddenly sounding off to you um, or suddenly you're lacking volume in some spots or stuff like that. Um, so it's a little bit annoying to work with in my opinion, but it's a common way of sidechaining. So there is that. Uh, the final way is using a dedicated side, uh, sidechain tool, for example, LFO tool. There are other ones out there, but they basically all function the same way where you have uh, kind of what we had before with uh, Serum FX, you just have a curve that you can edit and then there's a volume amount. Uh, I also like that there's a depth amount here. Uh, so you can set this kind of like a dry wet and then you can also set the amount of volume that's actually going to sidechain. Uh, you could do the same by just doing this. This would be uh, setting this slider to 50 basically. And this is just a dedicated host. Um, the disadvantage of this is that it only really works with the rate uh, set to a uh, as, as the same way. So if you have like a drum groove that looks like this, then it's a little bit harder to use LFO tool because you have to set up a MIDI trigger for it and it's a, a little bit of a hassle. So generally four on the floor kind of beat works very well with LFO tool, but anything more complex tends to uh, be a little bit of a hassle. Um, so those were the four ways of sidechaining something and kind of basically uh, talking about what sidechaining is. Uh, I definitely recommend sidechaining uh, a lot more than people tend to do, especially in sidechains. Uh, what I hear from a lot of people when they're starting out producing is that they uh, just um, like make sure that the kick and bass fits well together and then all the other elements are kind of thrown there on top of it. No sidechaining, no grooving, because uh, it's not only helping you make a better mix, but it also adds that little bit of groove and a little bit of bumpiness that you sometimes want from uh, some of those elements. So experiment a lot more with sidechaining. Um, especially not on the bass or on other elements that are not the kick and bass uh, or your bass line. Um, obviously, try to also get uh, some side chaining on your bass line if you think you need it. Um, that's still a common thing that people do. Uh, I personally don't side chain my bass line. I just make sure that the volumes are correct and that it's 
not clashing in the first place because then you don't have to do that. Um, but if you're just starting out, try to sidechain a lot and you will see that you have a lot more space in your mix to work with, especially if you sidechain towards the kick because the kick is really there to kind of take away all the energy when it hits and it's important that it's coming through. Um, so sidechaining is the way to do that. Uh, so that's it for today. If you enjoyed today's video, leave a like and if you're new, subscribe. And I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.